Hello again and welcome to another Black Templar Friday. It's been a short week this week. Monday was a day off, New Year's Day, so I've only had to work Tuesday to Friday and it's uh, most of it's just been catching up and stuff, so uh, not too not too bad to be honest. Um, yeah, so hope you guys have had a a good week. Uh, for those of you that don't really understand the format of Black Temper Friday, it's a uh, video, less sort of tactical video, less structured, just free for all, stream of consciousness, relaxing, just whatever video. Just um, yeah, just at the end of the week where we just talk about Warhammer things in general, what I've been doing, painting. You guys put down in the comments epic stories, you know. Ask any questions you like um, about any topics, you know, preferably Warhammer related, but not always. Uh, yeah, so that's it, really. Um, so, yeah, what's been going on in the in the world of Mordian Glory this week? Well, apart, obviously, apart from going back to work after having some time off. Well, I actually got very uh, little painting done in my time off, unfortunately. Um, but uh, I was able to by the end of this week, finish off the first Chimera of, of Bravo Platoon. So, we've got, this is the fourth Chimera that we've finished. Some people have been asking um, where I get the bits from, for my Chimeras, for the side bits. So, um, obviously there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of variety from where I get my bits from. I have a big bits box. Um, but the on this particular model, the sledgehammer is from the Torx Prime kit. I, th I saw a person asking that question uh, last time I posted one of the cameras which had a sledgehammer, sledgehammer attack on the side. Um, yeah, that's the um, for the Torx Prime kit. It's just a it's just in there. Uh, there's loads of little bits in the Torx Prime kit. Um, on the same side of the sledgehammer, the big crate, the big Imperial crate. That's from the Razorback kit. It's from, well, it's from the old Razorback kit that I got from that charity shop. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know if they still have those bits in, but... Um, yeah, so that's, that's from the old Razorback kit. Um, on the other side, so that's coming up now, uh, you've got the shotgun, which is from the Scout Bikers, the fuel, which is from the Razorback kit, and the sort of saddlebag, which is also from the Scout Biker kit. So a lot, you know, a lot of space marine bits, really. Um, but I'm continuing with this, with this theme, this idea that the this is a regiment that generally operates, um, you know, being a mechanized regiment. They're generally on on the move a lot, traveling from location to location, uh, you know, and be, you know, th these guys aren't necessarily stuck on Armageddon. They, you know, they'll get shipped out to wherever they're needed. They, you know, the two hundred thirty fourth mechanized infantry. You know, the Imperium is always in need of, of specialised mechanised units. Um, but being from Armageddon, they're used to having to uh, trek across the ash wastes. Or not, I shouldn't say trek, but, you know, travel across the ash, ash wastes where having an extra can of fuel or, you know, just an extra pack of ammo is the difference between life and death. So that's why every Chimera is, is, has got ammo on the side of it. It's got... Um, you know, every Chimera's got extra fuel on the side of it. I am running out of jerry cans to actually stick on the side, so I've got a couple of big oil barrels I'm going to stick on the on the next couple um, of Chimera's. They're, fuel's just all getting painted red, so everyone knows what's in, in the fuel tanks, basically. Um, yeah, and, and on a lot of the tanks as well, I've got I've, I've had like a bolter hanging off, I've got a shotgun hanging off. Um, that's just, you know, you know, you never know when you get out of your Chimera and you've just got to just grab a gun off the side of the rack and, you know, blow, blow off an orc or something. Um, and if you've noticed, obviously, uh, every, and there's a las gun attached on the side of another one. I'm going to get, um, some other weapons attached on the side of the Chimera. I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's a survival thing. You never know when you need an extra can of fuel just to get you, keep you going. You never know when you need... Uh, a weapon quick to hand. Uh, you never know when you're going to need that extra box of ammo. You never know. And every every Chimera has a tool strapped to the side. Um, every one of them. So I've got two sledgehammers so far. What what tools do I have strapped? I've got the kind each Chimera here. So I've got sledgehammer, sledgehammer, pickaxe, and shovel. 
So every every chimera has has a tool attached to the side. And I have my bits here. What's going what's coming up on the other chimeras? So two big oil drums, another sledgehammer, and I'm gonna have another spade. So there you go, that's 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 what's gonna be strapped to the side of each vehicle. Just going through my bits now. And obviously plenty of ammo and and other weapons, so, you know, I'm going to have a couple of hotshot lads going strapped to the side in the next couple, I think. Because uh, I've got loads of hotshot lads guns in, in, you know, from the Scion kit, the ones that are in like the big holster kind of things, the big rifle holsters, so they'll look cool strapped to the side. Um, so yeah, that's the general plan of the Chimeras. So uh, yeah, two more Chimeras to go, two more infantry squads to go, and then that will be both platoons finished, and that will be... Um, obviously I'll have a few officers and characters to do as well but that will generally be all the infantry all the sentinels so that will be just the Lehman Russes left so the Steel Legion are coming along they are taking me you know a few months to, to, to raise the regiment so to say um, but it's just I'm just taking my time I'm just making sure it's done right One of the problem I have with my Mordians is they're so hodgepodge and the paint jobs have always been rushed on them because I've always rushed them to to get them done in time for like a deadline of some sorts. Normally I'm like, I'll go months without painting anything and then um, I'll do like a whole platoon of guards in like two weeks and I generally have to rush the paint job, um, you know, for a tournament. So, um, yeah, so that's why I'm taking my time with these Steel Legion. I want them to look good um, and I think they're coming I think they're coming out really really nicely so uh, I think it's it's well worth t taking the time spending the time on them um, so yeah that's what I've been doing painting wise this chimera is done um, I'm going to try I'm going to try this uh, next week um, repurposing maybe not the right word but repainting a couple of Lehman Russes I have a couple of Liam Russes that I built and did a thin layer of paint based on my Mordian scheme, um, not my, you know, the red, the red and tan. And I want to see if I can just spray over it. Um, if it doesn't look very good, I won't keep out, you know, whatever. Those tanks can go back to being Mordian, it's fine. Because um, the Mordian tanks can look however they want to look. Um, but yeah, I want this army... Is I'm willing to spend the money on it to buy everything new, build it all, make it look interesting, make it look unique. I'm willing to spend that money on it because I want this army to be, you know, the post, not the poster child for the channel, but I want this army to be something that I can feature on the channel with pride and be like, look, here is the best painted army we have on the channel to date, kind of thing. Um, so that that's it, that's it because with the new camera, I should say. Um, obviously got the new camera uh, and I've had a lot of really really positive feedback on the quality of the camera and I want to have good quality armies to go with uh, a good quality camera Ooh. should say I'm drinking my ice cold iron brew out of my metallic well it is metal really metal Star Wars Captain Phasma mug really cool it's, I've never had a metal mug before it's like metal on the outside like metal clad and then it's ceramic on the inside it's really cool I should get a picture of it at some point and put it up I think it's going to be my go-to uh, my go-to mug now it's you know it's very good it's better it's better than a normal mug better than a, I normally use like a big glass or something but I kind of really really like this mug it's just very I don't know just tickles Tickles me the right way. Um, what else? Right, yes, I um, for Christmas my uh, my um, oh, what was I going to say? Yes, for Christmas. Uh, what did I get for Christmas in terms of of Warhammer? Well, my amazing girlfriend got me a Heldrake, which is exact. Well, not exactly what I asked for, but it is what I asked for. Um, I like to buy my own Imperial Guard stuff. Some of you might be saying, why didn't you get to buy your Chimera or something? Um, two, two reasons. One, well, three reasons actually. One, I have so much Imperial Guard stuff that even when being put into the Steel Legion Army, um, which is relatively new, 
I have so much Imperial Guard stuff that if I get Imperial Guard stuff for uh, for Christmas, it's you know it's nice, but um, it just sort of just goes into the pile, goes into the war machine. Whereas uh, my Chaos Army or my Black Templar Army, um, well, Black Templars are mostly finished. My Chaos Army, if someone gets them for that, it's unique, it's special. I'm I'm going to use it. Um, so yeah, I got a Hell Drake and I built it. And I must say the kit is really really nice. You know, the, I'm hearing the whisperings of the warp in my ear. Um, I've got to decide what uh, what god I'm going to dedicate it to now because I have quite a large corn berserker force which is needs finishing off painting. Quite a large corn berserker force, but I've also got a small Slaneshi force, and I know those two factions don't really fight that well next to each other. They call and Slaneshi rivals, but I feel like my core army kind of has enough. Um, but my Slaneshi army, maybe I should just convert the Slaneshi Marines to to corn, and just and just throw myself into the core Marines. But I really like Slaneshi, and I really like corn. My two favorite gods. Never really been a big one for Nurgle. Never really been a big one for uh, for Zinch. I tell you what, I always find it funny with Nurgle. It's an old it's an, it's an old joke that I remember someone telling me. I'm sure they got it off the internet. But it's like, why would anyone ever worship Nurgle? Okay, let's go through them. You know, you worship Corn, you become super muscly. You might, you know, you'll gain uh, the amazing martial prowess. You'll become an, you know, an unstoppable killing machine. You'll become a great warrior if you worship Corn, or dedicate yourself to Corn. Dedicate yourself to uh, Zinch, and you'll become a, a bloody ma magician. You'll become a psyker. You'll be able to shoot lightning out of your fingers and see into the future. You know, you know that's a <coughs> part of me. And that's amazing, that's an amazing deal. Worship Sunesh, you just get like a giant dong. <laughs> no, worship Sunesh. Sunesh, and you get um, to feel the purest ecstasy in the world. And then it's like, worship Nurgle, get AIDS, get syphilis, get bloody, you know, rotting flesh, hang, oh yes, thank you Papa Nurgle, thank you for, you know, giving me this horrible disease, you know, it's like, why would anyone ever worship Nurgle, but the crazy thing is, is Nurgle's worshippers are apparently the happiest, so, someone explain that to me, um, I guess they don't feel any pain, I don't know, mm. speaking of Nurgle, and sort of the Imperial Guard, and uh, worshipping Nurgle even, um, I'm reading the book Cadia's Blood at the moment. Cadia's Blood, really good. It's a book about Cadian uh, shock troopers trying to cleanse this shrine world that's fallen to the plague of unbelief. And it's they're just obviously there's just zombies everywhere, and there's you know no spoilers, but there's just loads of Nurgle related shenanigans going on on the planet. It's pretty cool. Highly recommend it. Um, so far, it's pretty good. Um, <coughs> got a tickly throat. Um, so yeah, that's what's been just generally going on in in the in the life of Mordian Glory, New Camera, Hell Drake, Chimera finished, reading a book. Um, I'm trying to think what else I was going to say really. Um, oh yes, I had a battle, uh, another battle this week with my uh, Steel Legion. Won it. Which is good. Um, don't think I've lost them with my with my current list, with the with the distilled list. When it's been just you know, I played like five games and lost with my Steel Legion, and now I made all the changes, and now that list, the current list I've got is unbeaten. It's a list I've gone over so many times. I'll go over it once more in case there's some people that don't know it, but it's essentially it's a brigade. It's a brigade. I have. Two company commanders, two platoon commanders, an astropath, and a tech priest. Uh, six squads of infantry with plasma gun and the sergeant has a bolter. Each squad of infantry is in a chimera with two heavy bolters and a heavy stubber. Um, and then I have three Lehman Russes, two with battle cannon, one with execution of plasma cannon. And all of them have got a whole heavy bolter and sponsor plasma cannons. 
and then I have one tank commander um, which has a battle cannon, hull, heavy bolter and two plasma cannons, sponsons. Uh, and finally I have three las cannon armor sentinels. It's a really, really good list, really, really powerful. Who I played against Blood Angels and Blood Angels are their new codex. And I'll tell you what was really interesting. It's my opponent took a brigade. It was brigade on brigade. My opponent took a Blood Angels brigade. He had so many boots on the ground. He had like five, he had like four scout squads, two tactical squads, three devastator squads. Um, trying to think. Assault, two assault marine squads, scout bikers. Uh, so that's heavy support. It's fast attack is troops. Elites. He had... Um, they had like Sanguinary Guard. I can't remember his full list now. He had Sanguinary Guard and Death Company and a Sanguinary Ancient. And then he had Mephisto and a Captain for his uh, for his HQ choices. And he had a Whirlwind as well. Um, yeah, it was really, 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 really good list. Because um, people think Oh, you know, you never take a brigade of space marines, but we've had... He's played my Steel Legion list before, and it got absolutely destroyed by it. When he, had, he, was, he, was, he kept going... My opponent loves his Blood Angels. He's the guy that I've told you is trying to collect like, the full company of Blood Angels, full chapter of Blood Angels. He's got a company. He's trying to get up to a chapter. Um, and he's basically... He play, went before the Codex dropped, he was using... A really elite force. His army was made up of like two vanguard or whatever they're called. Two of the elite detachments. Um, now he has gone the opposite way. And he has... Because after playing me a few times and seeing how many troops and how many bodies I have the ground. He's done the same thing. He's got as many boots on the ground as he can realistically get in a space marine list. And the game was so close. I won by one point. It was the new chapter approved mission. Where you score, the six objectives and you score a point for each objective you hold at the end of each of your turns. And he was winning for a lot of the game and I managed to claw it back. And I managed to win the game by one uh, mission point and then I did manage to get First Blood, Warlord and Linebreaker. Um, but it was one mission point that I won the game by, which was crazy. Um, so yeah, and I just want to go over that. What I've sort of noticed... Um, is the people who... 8th edition is all about having the right mix of toys and boys. So back in 6th and 7th edition, it was all about, you know, min-maxing. People would take, like, two minimum tactical squads or two minimum scout squads and then take as many badass big toys they could get. And then when formations came in, people didn't even bother taking the tax units. They just took, you know, the biggest, baddest things they could take. But in 8th edition, what you want is about 65 to 70% infantry. You want foot, you know, bodies. And then you want the last 30 to 40% of your army to be, you know, toy breakers. You know, things that you use to take away your enemy's toys. Just to be absolute smashers. Um, and that's what he did in this game. He took all these scouts and tactical... Um, you know, scouts and assault marines, and they were his bodies he was pushing forward. His scouts were just like bolt pistol chainsaw scouts, you know, pushing them forward. And then he had his, and he obviously had tactical squads as well. And then he had his devastated squads where he had, I think it was three devastated, Dave, three devastated squads, each one with three las cannons. And his two tactical squads had a las cannon as well. That's like 11 las cannons. That's a lot of firepower. All, <coughs> you know, plus his death company, plus his. Sanguinary Guard. Sorry, I've got a sniffy nose. Come out of nowhere. Anyway, so the point I'm trying to get across is it seems like 8th edition is all about having more boys, less toys. Um, and he said he's been running that list a few games now and it's, it's, you know, he's been tweaking it and tweaking it. He's been distilling the list. And um, he says, it's you know, every time he adds more men into it and gets rid of, you know, more bullshit upgrades... Um, his list does better and better against a variety of opponents, and he says it's when he said he can't remember the last time he won a game of Blood Angels in Eighth Edition, but he's won a couple with this list now. You know, before he before he had this list, before he had this philosophy, 
So that's good. Um, it's good that we can see that other other armies can um, do well by taking large amounts of infantry. I think we're seeing that with on this channel as well. You know, the forces, the armies that don't take a lot of infantry struggle. The armies that have infantry as their key component do well. So, you know, you've got the Death Watch that, whilst elite in number, their key component, their main driving force, is their kill teams. Uh, the Imperial Guard, which do well, obviously, I always take a huge base of infantry. Uh, the Black Templars that do well take a huge base of infantry. The Scions take a huge base of infantry. You know, um, the Tau haven't done well yet, but they're looking into getting more and more infantry. That's what it's all coming down to. Infantry, infantry, infantry. So, interesting that other, other factions are starting to notice it now. You see a lot of Chaos players with lots of boots on the ground. You know, you don't see a lot of rhinos and stuff anymore. You just see a lot of people taking boots on the ground. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Tell me what you guys think. Are you seeing more and more people take more and more basic troops, or at the very least, throwing more and more bodies onto the table? You know, even traditionally elite armies like Blood Angels and other space marines, are you seeing them take more and more foot sloggers, more fodder. Let me know. Of course, as always, if there's any awesome battle reports or battle stories or just awesome things or just what you've been painting this week, please put a comment down below because the whole point of this video is just to relax, have a bit of fun, and of course, you know, just share epic moments, share stories and build up the community. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.